So, good morning. Uh, it's good to see that you've all woken up for me. Um, it flatters my ego, which didn't really need flattering anymore. But <laughs> um, We're going to talk about WordPress and SEO, and I'm going to try not to talk about a certain plugin. Um, <laughs> First thing that I think is very important for us as a community to understand is why does SEO matter? Uh, the mission of WordPress is to democratize publishing through open source GPL software. And just about six months ago, um, Omar, our CTO, who looks somewhat like this, um, said, well, basically what we're doing is to democratize SEO through open source GPL software. And I think it's really important for the community to understand that what we try to do is not just build a cool plugin, but what we try to do is give everyone the tools to optimize their site to the fullest extent through software that everyone can use. So the butcher around the corner is literally using the same software as Disney is using on all of their sites. Um, we've decided to call that SEO for everyone, so that's our new mission statement, uh, which also means that we still believe in SEO. Because I'm going to try and dispel a few SEO myths today. Um, and the first one of that is this, this often heard thing that, yeah, but well, SEO is really dead, right? Google can do it all now. <sighs> that is like about the most utter nonsense you'll ever hear. This is a very recent uh, research in which it shows that like 22.6% of all e-commerce orders in the US came from organic search on top of everything else. There is no competition for organic search. I've worked for many, many huge sites in this world and all of them get the majority of their traffic from organic search. Um, People say you can't outrank a lot of these big sites. Well, this is rel canonical, a standard that was invented by Google, and look who's ranking number one. Hey, that's us. Everyone can do this. Good SEO can beat everything, and to be honest, Google has a lot of crap content on their site, so we can, we can make better content than that. That's why we rank better. The question is, how good is WordPress, really? Um, we've done a lot in the last few years. We try to be active in the WordPress community and we do a lot of patches on WordPress core to make things better. And there's a few things I wanted to touch on that most of you will probably not have noticed that we did, but that are important to uh, how WordPress works and how WordPress works with Google. One of these things is robots.txt changes. The ones of you who have noticed recently that we added an allow WP admin slash admin ajax.php to the robots.txt, yeah, that was me. <laughs> Um, the reason for that is quite simple. All those themes that load in content through Ajax on the front page, Google needs to see that content. If you're blocking that, that bit of content, Google can't see it. Google can't tell you what's on that page. It can't rank it. That doesn't work. We've had a lot of improvements to how we handle titles, um, mostly thanks to Constantine. I don't know whether he's here. Uh, but there's a lot, been a lot of good work, work on that. And finally, finally, in 2016, our content management system actually treats titles as content instead of something that the theme needs to handle. Um, we've defaulted to postname. I think we did this in 2015. Uh, but there's a lot of these small, siddle, single things that we can do that make everything better. And everything else that you need to do is really only a small theme change away, or you could use a plugin. <laughs> um, and one of the things I wanted to touch on, who of you were uh, in WordCamp Europe? That's a lot more than I was expecting. Anyway. Um, at WordCamp Europe, during the interview with Matt, Miley from Google, who's speaking later today, please go and see her, um, said, hey, uh, there's only like 72%, I think she said, of WordPress sites are mobile friendly. That is a disgrace. I mean, 72% sounds like a lot, but it means that 28% of sites, one in four, is not mobile friendly. We need to get better. And we need to get better soon. So let's dive a bit deeper. When we talk about SEO, we really think about three different steps. The first step we, f and we think about is crawlability. This really has nothing to do with optimization yet. This is really the ability for Google to find stuff. 
And we talk about findability, about using the words and making it people, uh, possible for people to find stuff. And then we talk about optimization. But optimization is really the last step of a very long process. So let's dive in. Crawlability, uh, we define as the ability for a search engine to spider everything it needs and everything you want it to find. Which means that those robot.txt changes that we made in core should really be on your site too. If you have a static robots.txt, you might want to look at that and see if it's still up to date. Are you allowing Google and other search engines to see your JavaScript and CSS files? Because they need to see them because they want to see how your site, what your site looks like. So Core does this by default, you might not. A good way to test this is by going into Google Search Console. Who here has a Google Search Console account for their site? That's not enough hands, people. <laughs> Every single one of you should have a Google Search Console account. I'm not kidding. There is no other way to do this right. Get a Google Search Console account for your site, add your site to it, and try this. It's called Fetch as Google in Google Search Console. And you can see on the left, uh, how Googlebot views the page, and on the right, how a normal user would see the page. And if they're not the same, you're doing it wrong. It will still say partial. You'll, and you can probably not see that. It says partial in, in small green letters somewhere there. Because there's some stuff that Google can't get to, usually Google's own files. And yes, that's stupid. <laughs> One of the things that we run into still, even in 2016, is a proper URL structure. People still don't have proper URL structures on some of their sites. So use something like Postname. If you're a new site, add the date to it. If you're not a new site, don't do that. Make it as simple as possible. Make sure that your URLs make sense and that you've really thought about what's in my URLs. If it doesn't say anything about your content, it's probably not a good idea to have your URLs like that. And then there's this small thing called canonical URLs. A canonical is a tag that indicates to Google which page uh, it should index as if it sees similar versions of, uh, of a page. We have had canonical URLs in WordPress core for a single, a single pages for quite some time now, but we don't have them anywhere else. Some plugins add them. Um, I could mention a few, but I won't. Um, but basically, any good SEO plugin adds them. But Core doesn't do that for everything yet, and it should. And why should it do that? Well, because when you have example.com and this, with a UTM campaign parameter, which is for Google Analytics, so you'd think Google would understand that. You'd think that Google would understand that the first one is more important, right? And that it shouldn't index the other one. People seem to think this an awful lot. Google is surely smarter than that. That's when we throw a big fat rookie alert. <laughs> because honestly, Google is not that smart. And the best example I can give to you is of our fearless leader, Matt, because that second URL there is really the same URL. So he's ranking for Matt, which is awesome. That's why that footer link on WordPress.org is there. Um, but the fact that he's number two, too, is actually rather stupid. And that is simply because there is no canonical on that home page. Another thing that we think really needs improvement is XML sitemaps. XML sitemaps are by now an expected, an expected feature of any CMS. You can see that by the fact that almost everyone has some sort of XML sitemaps plugin installed. And uh, that's why we think it should be in core. Um, so Yip is here. He's sitting in the front row. He's leading the feature project that got approved to actually get XML sitemaps into core. So if you want to join us in building that, talk to him. Um, we've got a few more tricks up our sleeve there, talking to Google about possible other ways of doing that, but we're still going to push forward and trying to get this into core and out of all those plugins, because that's better for everyone. I did mention that you needed a mobile-friendly theme, right? I can, cannot stress this enough. If you're not t taking your site as serious as this, if you're not in time to like 
bring that site to everyone. Now you can say, hey, I only have 10% mobile traffic. You know what? If your site's not mobile friendly, you're going to lose that 10% too because Google is not stupid. I can tell you that it is stupid in all these other things, but it can see whether your site is mobile friendly. And it will take all that mobile friendly tra uh, mobile traffic away from you. So if you don't have a mobile friendly site, looking at whether you have enough mobile traffic to actually justify building a mobile friendly site is about the stupidest thing you can do. So don't. Another thing is that you'll always need some form of cash. Every once in a while we'll run into this discussion into whether, why WordPress needs caching and whether WordPress needs caching. Stop the whining, get caching. And if your host doesn't help you in getting decent caching, get a decent host. Every CMS in the world needs caching and so does WordPress. There is no other way of doing this. But when you've done all this and when you've fixed all this for your site, you've really only fixed the first bit. You've made sure that your site is crawlable. Now we're going to go to the next step, which is findability, which is the ability for anyone to find everything you want them to be able to find, which starts with, and this is where the hard part comes in, because you can't really install a plugin to do this for you. You need to do keyword research, and you need to figure out what people search for when they need to find you. And nine times out of 10, that's not the name that you gave your product. So please stop doing that. I've worked for some of the biggest companies in the world that had branding officers that told me that their product was named X, and I was like, you're wrong. The problem with branding officers is that they're usually too high up the food chain. Um, but keyword research is not something that's simple. I'm just gonna tell you that you need to do it now because I can talk about that for days and still not have taught you everything you need to know. But it is the basis of every SEO project. Just thinking about what do I need to be found for? People ask us why we don't distill the focus keyword from your post, why we don't automatically tell you which key focus keyword you've been writing about. We don't because we want you to think about that before you start writing. And you simply cannot be found for you words that you never use, and that is that might seem very simple, but th even though we've been telling that for years as SEOs, and I've, I'm not the only one, there's plenty of people in the room who've been telling that for years, people still don't seem to grasp that this is the, the most important truth of SEO. Each topic, and I don't mean each keyword, but each topic needs a post or a page. Don't try and cram 15 different things onto one page. Build a site structure that works. You can't rank for, all, for different words on one page. And this is exactly why WordPress does so well and has such a good reputation. Because most of the time when people write a blog post, they write about a single topic. And that is very easy for Google to understand and it's easy for users to find. But use that when you're writing other stuff too. When you're writing your about page and you have a couple of important things to write about your company, well, maybe this should not be one page but a couple of different pages. Maybe you should think about what are the things that you want to be found for outside of just your products but also your mission statement and all these other things. What is important to you? Let me dispel another SEO myth. Who here was, uh, was in this room, or that room actually, for Chris Lemma's talk yesterday? Chris was talking about finding your own voice as a blogger and he told you to write a lot. I will not disagree with that, but I will disagree with anyone who tells me that you need to blog daily to do a good SEO. I really, really, really would prefer any of you to write good content every once or, uh, every week or every two weeks, put up one good post is so much more preferable than to just push out crap every day. So instead of writing that new post, I've got a couple of suggestions on what you really could be doing to your site as well. Find a bit of good old content on your site that's doing well, update it, bring it into 2016, and change the publication date. It's really as simple as that. 
you can do a lot of technical work so you only have to change the last modified date and it shows that on your site but most themes are not really capable of doing that that's what we do in yoast.com but our wordpress seo article i wrote the original version of that in 2008 it still ranks number one for wordpress seo to this day and the only thing we do to it is we update it once a year and of course that's a beast of an article but it attracts about 5,000 visitors daily. If you can write something like that and build upon that every time that you republish it, that's a lot better than just cranking out new shit every day. Another thing that you should really do is optimizing your tags and categories. There's so many sites where we come in that have 200 posts and 400 tags. <laughs> that doesn't really work. Think of it as a way to structure your content. Think of it as a library and shrink that number down to reasonable sizes. Some of the publishers I've worked with had a tag manager, a person who was responsible for deciding whether something had to become a tag, yes or no. That might seem like a weird thing to do. It actually led to the fact that The Guardian has the SEO position it has right now. Because they have 4,500 tags, they publish 400 articles or so a day, so four and a half thousand is not that much. But it really meant that everything was structured in one and the same way all the time. You need some librarian skills to do that. And I hate that we call them taxonomies because tags are really not taxonomies because they're unstructured. But update this. Go through it. Look every once in a while whether you have tags that have only one or two posts in them. And if so, delete those tags. Redirect them to something else. The thing that people seem to think is that Google will find everything by itself. It will not. You need to link to it. If you don't link to content, no matter how good it is, you will never rank. Whatever Google tells you about links, and they tell a lot of things about links that are true, you still need links to rank. If you don't have links from within your site and from outside of your site, you will never rank. So work on that. That in itself is also hard work. Link building is not easy. It's something that comes from a lot of uh, talking to other people, telling them, hey, I wrote this piece. Do you like that? Maybe you would want to link to that. And you get those emails, and you probably find them just as annoying as I do yet they work. But the problem with most of those emails is that you don't really get into a real conversation first. We link to plenty of people, but we link to people that we know and that we trust. So the chance of you getting a link from Yoast.com is a lot higher if you talk to any of us here and we see that you have a cool product and we talk to you for a while and then we'll link to you. We're not unique in that. Everybody works like that. So do that. Go out. Talk to people. F figure out what, who's writing about your topic and go to where all those, these people are. It is almost just like this thing called marketing, <laughs> which, according to Matt, we've only discovered in 2016 that it was important. Um, <laughs> but we're going to work on that. But just like in real life, you can't cut corners. Don't buy any links. Don't do any of the things that feel fishy. If they feel fishy to you, they probably are. And it's harder than ever to get sites to rank well after you've done stupid stuff. So please don't, because I've helped enough of you people get back, and it's not fun. It really is not fun. I've done projects where we've had 40 people on the help desk do outbound call work for a month to get rid of links that we'd bought. Don't do that. So the last step is optimization. That's the, the improve your chances of actually ranking and getting clicks once you rank. It's as simple as thinking of your most important keyword. Think of which page on your site should rank for that keyword. And then do this, this nifty little trick, a query in Google Site colon 
your domain name, that keyword. If the page that you thought needed to come up first did not come up first, you're doing it wrong. If it did come up first, but it's still not ranking very well, start with linking the other pages that you find in that top 10 to that number one. That's just a simple method of fixing your internal linking, and you'd be surprised how much good that can do on many sites. It's a very simple way of getting your, your keyword ranking just that bit higher. I'm talking too fast for my own slides. Uh, it really means that you need to go into Google Search Console. I did tell you to get that Google Search Console account, right? In Google Search Console, there's this awesome feature called Search Analytics. And in Search Analytics, it has a lot of data. The data says you should uh, look at, you can, it can show you where you rank for which, which keywords and what the click-through rate, the CTR, is that you get for that search result. So if you're ranking number one, you can see, hey, 30% of the people searching for that keyword click through to my site. Look at the data and compare keywords. You'll quickly figure out that for some keywords that are ranking number one or number two or number three, you're getting a lot more clicks than for others. Look at why that is. Look at those titles. Look at those snippet previews and figure out, hey, this one is more enticing than that one. Maybe I should improve that one. And then do that over and over and over again. Crafting good titles that people click on is an art that takes years to master. The only way I can tell you to improve that is by doing it and testing with it and playing with it, and it's different for every site and different for every niche. So play with it. Now, there's a couple of things that are really new in 2016 that uh, I wasn't a big fan of at first, but that I'm slowly starting to warm up to, and one of them is this. <laughs> You can see a, a few subtle differences between the left and the right result. And if I tell you that the left result took about two and a half seconds to load and the right result took about 1.2 seconds to load, you're probably getting a good guess of what the difference is. That's a web mobile page. That's an AMP page, Google's AMP project. Now, to be honest, with the current AMP WordPress plugin, you can't make it look like that just yet. Um, so you'll have to do some manual work. But AMP is, getting, is gearing up to be very, very awesome. Just a few weeks ago, Google completed forms for AMP, which means that by now you can have a complete canonical AMP site. Paul Bacows, one of the lead developers for AMP at Google, has a website that is purely AMP. There is no normal HTML version anymore. It's purely AMP, and it's crazy fast. And it has a sidebar, a menu, and everything you would want. So for those of you who are web developers that have not looked at AMP, start looking at AMP, because I think that in two, three years from now, we will be building sites purely in AMP. And that's a bit scary, because it's so owned by Google, but it's a lot faster. And to be honest, the thing that Google is right on is that speed really, really is that important. It w AMP will be everywhere. So if your site is big, you need it now. If you've got a smaller site, you can study it and see like, okay, how are we gonna do this? But I thought I'd show you how big it is by showing you how the traffic is evolving. This is the, tra the AMP traffic for Yoast.com over the last few months. That's 5,000 page views a week, which still for us is not that much yet, but I've worked with publishers where it's almost 10% of, of page views now. That's a lot of traffic. Traffic that you're not getting for a lot of these results if you don't have AMP pages. So you need to do all this, analyze what's working, and then rinse and repeat. If you think, wow, that sounds like a lot of work, a lot more work than just installing that plugin, I'm sorry. SEO, as I tell people, stands for seriously effortful optimization. It's very effective, 
but it's a lot of work. So you're just getting started. I wish you good luck. My name is Joost de Valk. I'm the founder and CEO of Joost, and I'll take your questions. Who just line up at the microphone right there we'll which I can hardly time. see yeah hi hi Go great ahead. talk uh, thank you so much uh, I think I know the answer to this but uh, I guess my question is about amp uh, are we finding already that Google is ranking sites that have amp higher than just regular mobile friendly sites um, well the problem is there's no hard truths in SEO so but in general? My gut feeling, yes. Do I have statistical proof for that? No. Um, but what you do see, especially for publishers, is that the AMP carousel that they show uh, for uh, a lot of news results, well, that only has AMP sites. So if, you, if you're not AMP, you're not in there. So in that way, yes. And it'll be in more places. You see the new recipe markup requirements actually state that you need to make an AMP page. So there's more and more of these things where they, for, for you to show up, will require that you have an AMP page. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Chris and I'm new to WordPress and I've got uh, two clients that I've built sites for and I've used a paid theme for them. And on every page there's a, you know, you put your content on there and then there's a lot of stuff for SEO. Is that worthwhile or is that a waste of time or should I just buy the unnamed plugin you keep referring to? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to buy it. It's free. That's what Chris keeps spanking me for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, your question was whether the, the SEO data and that theme is worthwhile. It really depends on the theme. The only problem I have with SEO data and themes is that you'll at some point switch themes. And then your SEO data is in your theme and you need to move it somewhere else. Now that can be done, but it's a painful process. So I'd like to keep like the separation of content and design clean and do the SEO stuff in a plugin and the design in a theme. Hi, my name's Corey. Thanks. You said that um, new sites should add the date to permalinks, but if you're an old site, you should not do that. And I wonder if you could unpack that. No, 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 sorry. You said the question was, uh, I am repeating for WordPress TV. Hi there. Um, news, whether news, new sites should add a date to the perm permalink, I think you misunderstood me. It's news sites, so oh. a site in, in which you that have news. That makes total sense. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Sometimes it's that easy. <laughs> My name is Tom, and uh, I'm I'm, an, I'm a DMOZ editor, and uh, I do SEO for people in Atlanta, for businesses in Atlanta. I just my question is, uh, uh, how how important do you think is uh, a link on uh, DMOZ these days, and say like uh, other directories like Best of the Web? I know you said you shouldn't buy any links, but Best of the Web is like one of the I guess top SEO directories. What are your thoughts on that? So how important is a directory link for your SEO? Well, to be honest, no single link is going to help you get anywhere. Okay. Um, yeah. At least no single link that's, that's acquired that easily. So if you can get a link in a site that mentions you that really has a lot of authority, then that's worth something. DMOS, in my eyes, is still worth a link that, you, that could be worthwhile for a site. But spending money to get that, I would not do. Um, at the same time, even for Yoast.com, uh, about a year and a half ago, we got a mention from The Guardian after we uh, completed The Guardian migration to TheGuardian.com. That single link increased our traffic by about 10% in one month. So there, there are sites where you can have a gigantic impact by getting that link, but these are always sites that are fully editorial and uh, that don't link out easily. So, is it worthwhile? Yes. Best of the web, sorry, I, I knew these guys back in 2006 when SEO was still all about that. I would not spend my money there right now, even though I've partied with them hard back then. 
And one, one more question. How long does it take for you to crank out a blog post on average? So how long does it take me to crank out a blog post? It really depends on what kind of blog post it is. I'm very good at ranting. Um, and when I do that, it takes about 30 minutes. Uh, when I, uh, we, I recently wrote a very long post on hreflang that took me about four days to write. And then uh, another day of consulting with people at Google and everywhere to make sure that everything in it was completely correct. So that's about a week for an article. Um, which now ranks for every term around hreflang, so it's worth it. But good content takes a lot of time to, to create. We have a content team of three people at Yoast, and, we, and everyone in the, in the management team at Yoast writes regularly because we think that is very important to keep sharing our content. But that is a, a lot of investment to make. So it, don't look at the time spent. Look at what it will get you. And that's something you'll have to practice and play with. Thanks. Hi, my name's Donna, and uh, I have kind of a two-part question. One, I want to hear your thoughts on the implications of voice search on SEO. And kind of related to that, whether uh, JSON-LD should eventually make its way into WordPress core. OK. Um, well, first of all, whether the impact, what's the impact of voice search? The impact of voice search is by now, at this point, really limited to stuff that you do when you search with your voice, which is stuff that you do when you're in your car or when you're uh, somewhere that, where you need directions or to find a place. So it's, the impact is, is mostly related to qu queries around which, where is a store nearby, how can I find something, stuff like that. I don't see anyone in this room doing, hey, Google, here around the hallways. We, we, we rather that happens tie. around my dinner table all the time, but I have three teenage boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I won't tell you that that won't change. I think it will change, but at this point, it's, it's probably mostly about that. The thing that it does, though, overall, is a trend that we have anyway of people searching for longer search terms. Because basically, when you're doing, hey, Google, you're, you're talking in a full sentence. And the funny thing is, you see people typing like that, too. So Google needs to get better at determining which part of the sentence is the thing that you're searching for. So it really needs to be, get better at language. And that's what their Hummingbird update basically did. It, it made them better at recognizing what, they were, what you're searching for and how to handle that. Um, that means that they're getting slightly better at natural language which means that you can write posts and have very readable posts, and Google get, can get better at understanding those. Now, the big caveat here is something that you, most of you won't ever bother with, but it's very good at that in English. In Dutch, not so much. So in all languages that are smaller, it's, that takes a lot more effort in Google's side. So there's a, really a, a, a two-way stream in, in SEO now and how you optimize some of that stuff. And in English, that's really different from some other languages. Now, second, your JSON-LD question. Um, some of the stuff that we do in our plugin should probably be in core. Um, I think that over time, we'll add more and more, uh, stuff, uh, more and more of that stuff in core. But at the same time, there's a lot of specific JSON-LD stuff for recipes and uh, movies and, all, uh, and things like that that will always be theme or, theme or plugin land. Um, it would be good if we, at some point, got an API to make these things a bit easier and a bit more workable with each other. But that's probably a few years away, to be honest. OK, and what if, just a, a little bit of follow-on, because it's not only asking voice, but when you have um, you know, Google Now telling you answers in voice, or uh, Alexa with Amazon's thing and Siri, um, how, how do you optimize for that, the fact that you know, Google really doesn't even want to take you to your site. They just want to give you the answer to your question. Um, well, yes, but if you can get and can be that answer, that's usually a very good thing. I mean, the answer boxes in Google that you see now when you do a search query uh, are really uh, just a, a precursor of, of them telling you that real life in, in, with a computer voice. And so far, it comes down to writing good copy that is actually something that they can read out loud and make sense at that point. So it, it really boils down to good writing in the end, whatever you do. Great, thanks. 
Hi. Hi, my name is Robbie. I'm an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, w I really look forward to uh, AMP when it first came out. I was I installed it, got it running. My problem with AMP, though, and I searched your site on a mobile phone, it's killing my bookmarks. If I, I got this nice little picture, it says, it's your site, Yoast, SEO. Yeah, and, you're, little, and you're on Google's cache. Yes. It, do you know if they're going to fix that? Because it's really killing uh, mobile bookmarks. If, I don't know if anyone I, noticed I that. hope so, but I'm not the one deciding. So I'm not the only one. I'm not <laughs> losing my mind, right? Well, no, it, it, it is a problem, and it's, it leads to weird things. Uh, the canonical on AMP pages is required to point back to the original site, so to us. So if you share that URL that you're looking at now in the Google cache on Facebook, it should pick up the right one from our site. But this goes wrong everywhere all the time. And it's, uh, well, the web is inherently broken, and this breaks it just a little bit more. <laughs> is, there, is there a fix? I, I saw one site, they had a link that you could actually tap it and it would take you out of AMP. Um, well, you can do that. Um, I don't think that's the solution, to be honest. I think the solution okay. for Google is to um, try and actually come up with a way that we see the real URL when we're on that page and still serve it from their cache, but that would lead to a whole other side of, uh, of, of trouble. To be honest, my biggest scare is not just that, it's the security implications of you seeing a google.com URL in your browser and, uh, and google.com asking for a specific password and people trusting Google far too much. Okay. So the, the, there's a lot of implications there in, in terms of uh, people abusing that uh, in, in, in weird ways that I don't really like. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks. It's work to do. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I'm wondering um, what you would recommend uh, small businesses to do that don't have, you know, all the time in the world or resources to focus on SEO. What's most important to, like, do an audit and what you do on an ongoing basis, maybe from here or just in general? So what would you do as a small business? Well, as a small business, first of all, you really still need to think about what your marketing message is going to be. So not just your SEO, but your overall marketing message. If you do that well, it should be really easy to go from there to, uh, OK, that means that we will want to be found for these keywords. And that doesn't need to be a list of 10,000 keywords. Just uh, uh, 10, 20, 30 keywords can already be a very good challenge. Um, and crank out some content for that and see where you end up. And if you're a small business, don't aim too high. The amount of people that we get in that want to rank for stuff like car parts or car insurance. Or, <laughs> and that's just not going to work. Right. But car insurance plus location might actually work very well for you. So go for a keyword that's attainable to you, that, that you see your peers in the search results, and uh, start working on it. And, don't be afraid to start with like four or five pages and add gradually to it over time. Just spend a couple of hours every two weeks or every month to write some new content and to do some optimization and you'll slowly get better. Great, thanks. Good luck. Hi, Joe here, great talk. Um, you kind of just answered my question. Well, kind of try and phrase it a little differently. Um, for small businesses or people who don't have a website that's quite as authoritative as Yoast.com, um, what kind of keyword research can we do? Um, you know, if we don't have all the links yet, um, if we're still kind of a, a young website, um, anything you can suggest in terms of going after more long tail keywords, et cetera? Yeah, I, I would you'd go as deep as you can. So where there's still people searching for it. And, and then build your way up. Don't try and rank for the biggest keywords immediately. So go deep and go very local, especially if you're a small business. The, the, the local part cannot be misunderstood. Uh, you probably have a couple of competitors locally, but you, but you usually don't have dozens. Um, and look for specific problems that people address. Uh, so if you uh, if they call you on the phone and they ask specific questions, look at hey, can I turn this specific question into a blog post? Uh, there's there's all these points where you're you know something that other people don't, where you can help them by writing writing about that. And don't be too afraid to give away your knowledge uh, and and your secret sauce because your secret sauce is really keeping up mostly. So. Um, 
write about what you do and write about the questions that you've had, and then you'll you'll soon figure out that uh, it it helps and people are finding you. Great, thank you. Hi, my name is June. Thank you for this session. I've I've read a few articles uh, that said in that Google in 2017 will begin penalizing websites that don't have the SSL. So I wanted to hear what you have to say about that, because then it requires a dedicated IP address. I have a lot of clients who get shared hosting, so I wanted to hear yeah. your input on shared IP addresses as well. Um, so the question is, is Google going to make SSL more or HTTPS more important? Yes. I think we all are. Uh, because a lot of the stuff that we want to do in websites requires SSL because we need secure connections to do specific things that uh, modern web apps will want to do. Um, fortunately, you don't need a specific IP address anymore for SSL. Uh, there's a, a standard called server name indication that is about 10 years old um, that every modern browser in the world supports. And that allows you to have multiple uh, HTTPS certificates on the server on the same IP. Um, so that's not true anymore and not, not really needed anymore. In fact, there's more and more hosts that offer Let's Encrypt or another way to get free SSL on your site, uh, which is really, really a big step forward. The, the good thing about uh, getting HTTPS on your site is it also allows for a lot of other speed optimizations, like HTTP2 and, and all these other things that I'll, that Technically, I won't go into, but they make your site a lot faster without you doing anything. And I, I think we should all strive for that. And maybe a slightly political statement, but in this day and age, I'm very happy if everyone goes to SSL and, we, and, and your browser history is your browser history and not someone else's. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chris. Um, when I started doing this years ago, Google Analytics was the easy choice for diagnosing website traffic and um, seeing what your traffic is coming from and what you can do to fix problems. Mm -hmm. In recent years, um, organic search results have been hidden. There's a lot of referral spam, which kind of skews the statistics to a point of making it unusable. Do you still recommend that as your primary tool for diagnosing and just determining where your traffic is coming from and how you can change it? So do I still recommend Google Analytics? Um, yes. Okay. Um, mostly because there is no competition that's affordable that's any good. Um, is, is Google Analytics hard to work with at times? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and, and did they hide a lot of data? Yes, as well. So that's why you need that Google Search Console account, because that's op very often the missing link to the data that, you're, that you need. And no, that's not as good as what it was 10 years ago. And referral spam is annoying. And there's a lot of more annoying things about Google Analytics. But as long as I don't have a better solution for you, that is what I will keep recommending. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in a lot of these areas to improve things for site owners. I think Google is just as worried about referral spam as everyone here in this room is that knows about it. Because it makes them, it makes it hard for advertisers to diagnose where their traffic is coming from too, and while well, Google Analytics is part of their advertising, uh, the, the advertising part of their company, so uh, they for for them it's a it's a tool to get people to understand how how advertising works and how it makes money, and, and well they want people to spend more money so they need to figure that out. So they will probably fix that at some point, but it's a very hard problem. Thank you. Let's give Yost a big round of applause. <laughs>